Good, me- good morning, church. Good morning. I want to share a verse with all of you this morning. It's found in Psalm 116, verse 7. It's a very beautiful verse. Uh, when, I re- I went, when I went through that verse and reflected on that verse, it brought me to tears. Now It's a very beautiful verse. It says, Rest once more, O my soul, for the Lord has been good. Rest once more. And when, when the psalmist was writing this verse, his soul was uh, chaotic. There were a lot of problems. There were a lot of issues. And he had to remind his soul, the Lord has been good. All this time, He has been good. You have rested in the goodness of the Lord. Now that everything's going wrong, He's telling His soul once more, God has been good. He's always been good that He always will. And because He is a good God, we can always rest assured in the goodness of our God. This morning, as we prepare our hearts to worship the Lord, let's quiet ourselves down and reflect how God has been good to us. One of the hymns that we love to sing tells us that we are to count our blessings, to name them one by one. And when we do so, we finally realize there's been so much blessing the Lord has put into our lives. So much more than our complaints deserves. God has been good. And there's really no reason for us to keep complaining. And this morning, let's come together to worship our good God. Let us all rise as we sing holy, holy, holy. Good morning, church. When something is made by us, we know all about it, its ins and outs, its components. We know it so well that when something is wrong, we'd be the best person to fix it. And because it is the work of our hands, we take care of it. We make it a point to keep it safe and intact. This and even more can be said of our God who made us. He is the one who knows us. He knows us best. Because He is our Maker and our Father. He knows when we slumber and when we rise. He knows our thoughts. He knows our words and our innermost being. He knows what is good for us. He knows how to save, rescue, encourage, and comfort us. And because God's love, of God's love, He does this for each and every one of us, no matter how sinful we are. So much so that He gave Jesus Christ to die on the cross for us to be able to enjoy our relationship with Him. How amazing is His Father's love.
Jesus Christ, my living Lord. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? that's brought about by the suffering and trauma in this world, the fear that's brought about by sin and shame, the fear brought about by our own flesh, all are driven out by God's perfect love. This gives us hope, hope that no matter who we are, no matter what we have done, no matter what we can do, the only thing that matters is that He is always and will be with us. Hope that the chain has been broken, that the darkness is overcome. And in Jesus Christ, we have a living hope. And the only thing that matters is our God, beautiful, majestic, marvelous, infinite in wisdom, and glorious above all.
Father, we fear you, not because of your holiness, not because of your justice. We fear you, O Lord, because you are good to us. We fear you, O Lord, because you search us out in order to save us, Lord. We fear you because in spite of all our unfaithfulness, you have been good to us. You have been faithful. And you continue to sustain us. We fear you, O Lord. Because we're afraid that one day, all that might stop. Because of our unfaithfulness. Because of our sinfulness. We fear you, Father, because you deserve the very best. And yet so often, Father, we become complacent because we trust that your love will continue to be new every morning for us. Forgive us, Lord. We ask, Father, this morning as we come before your presence that once again, may we go back and reflect upon the beauty of the cross, upon everything that Jesus did on the cross. Because only then, Father, will we begin to understand how much you've given for us, 
how much you've sacrificed for us. And only then do we understand truly that you deserve our all. It is our prayer, Father, that we would give our utmost for your glory, Lord. Help us to live our lives to bring glory and honor to the one person who deserves our all. Father, I commit each one of us into your hands, O oh Lord. I pray that you'd give us a heart that wants to see you magnified in our lives because you are good. That in everything that we do, it will be for you and for you alone, Lord. Father, we have lived our lives for ourselves for so long. Father, help us to turn our attention back to you because you love us and you want what's best for us. Even though there are times when everything doesn't seem right, when everything seems to be problems after problems, remind us that we can go back to your heart because your heart is good. And therefore, Father, we can tell our souls, rest once more in the Lord, for He has been good to us. Father, this morning, we come to worship our good God. And it's our prayer that you would let our hearts be able to meditate on your goodness. You'd let our heart be able to focus on you and you alone this morning. That our worship will be unhindered by the cares of this world, by the calls and the demands of our world. That this morning, we will be serving our one true King. And I pray that we will make a habit of truly worshiping and serving our one true King and our one true King alone. Father, I commit each one of us into your hands. Let our worship this morning, Father, be pleasing before your sight. Cleanse us from all sins that would hinder our worship to you. That this morning, we can give you everything that you deserve, Lord. The best that we can. Father, I ask that you continue to let your spirit work in us and through us this morning. Let your Holy Spirit and your word be powerful in this place once more. That as you speak through your servant this morning, your spirit will continue to work in hearts. That we would not just simply listen to your word, that we would not just simply understand your word, but that we would live out your word. Father, forgive us if fasting has not been one of our more focused discipline in life. And I pray that you would help us to understand the importance of abstinence in order for us to understand that there are more things that are far more valuable than whatever this world has to offer. This is our prayer this morning. That once again, as we listen to your word, you would once again speak to each one of us. This is our prayer, Father, that you continue to be with us and guide us, Father through our worship. We lift up our church into your hands, Father. We pray, Father, for those who are not here. We pray, Father, for those who are sick. We pray especially for Josh, O oh Lord. Continue to heal him. I pray, Father, for a quick recovery, that he can go back to school, that he can uh, continue to participate in ministry and even in his school activities, Lord. We pray, Father, for our medical mission next week, O oh Lord. I pray that you'd bless our doctors, you'd bless our team who will be going there. I pray, Father, for divine appointments, Father, even as we share the gospel to the people who will be joining our medical mission. I pray that they would find not just healing for their souls, but also feeling, not just healing for their bodies, but also healing for their souls, O oh Lord. That they would understand that there's one doctor above every other doctor. And I pray, Father, that through our medical mission, they would come to know you and turn their attention to you. Father, once again, we ask that you'd speak to us this morning. And this is our prayer, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
seated. This morning, once again, we are very privileged to be able to gather together and worship the Lord and had this, this opportunity to have a wonderful speaker in our midst. Our speaker this morning is uh, Pastor Benson Tolentino. He's the classmate of Brother Edward Fernandez. He's a pastor at United Evangelical Church and he's in charge of the marital counseling and all the couples in UECP. No? And um, this morning, kinoconvince niya si Vixon sa kasi <laughs> si Bea. Counseling na, huwag na patagalin. Okay. <laughs> We're very privileged to have uh, Pastor Benson with us this morning. Let's give the floor to Pastor Benson. Good morning. Yeah. So, uh, siguro belated uh, mid-autumn festival, kahit na three or four weeks late na ako. No? Belated mooncake festival to all of you. Ha? Huh? Sino dito nanalo ng Chongguan? Wala? Hingi pa man din sana ako ng balato. No? Also, since this will be my last uh, uh, sermon for this year, no, for this year, also, allow me, no? Since Burr month na naman eh, di ba? So, allow me to greet all of you an advanced Merry Christmas as well. Huh? Okay. So, let's go to our passage, no? Our passage will be in Matthew chapter 6, verse 1, and also Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 to 18. No? Matthew chapter 6, verse 1, and also to Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 to 18. So, uh... If you had your Bibles with you, open it on that, uh, on that section no? so that uh, as I go through those uh, uh, passages, you'll be able to have a deeper understanding of ano yung gusto sabihin sa atin our Lord Jesus Christ. So before we begin, let's have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you again. No? Lord, this is your day. This is your time. And I pray that as we come together, even though, Lord, probably some of us are not into it. No, we're just going through the motion. Forgive us. And I pray, Lord, that you prepare our hearts this morning to receive your holy words, your words that gives life, your words that will transform us to become more like your son, Jesus Christ. And I pray, Lord, that indeed all of us not only will be able to understand them, but also truly will we be able to live out the things that you are teaching us. For these things I pray only in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So let me begin in Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. So, ano sabi ni Jesus Christ dito? Beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no rewards with your Father who is in heaven. So, our Lord Jesus Christ begins, no? With a word of warning. Sabi niya, beware. Watch out. Be on your guard. Bakit? Bakit? Because it is very easy for each and every one of us to do things that are good for purposes that are evil. Gagawa tayo na maganda, pero meron tayong hidden agenda. And in what areas are Christians tempted to swerve in, or act like, you know, act like hypocrites? Would you believe no? it is the same now as it was back then? Ano yung mga eras na yon? In the areas of giving, in the areas of praying, and even in the areas of fasting. No? Ganun pa rin. Sa pagbibigay, no? We give, pero we have a hidden motive. No? Meron tayong, ah, balang araw, babawi ako sa kanya. No? Whether politicians, whether, you know, uh, people that we meet in business, no? and even as well as Christians, sometimes we have hidden agendas. So, sometimes, uh, so it is very easy for us to do things that are good for purposes that are evil. And this 
outward manifestation of faith, sorry, outward manifestation of righteousness. No? Itong outward manifestation na ginagawa natin can easily be what? Be fake, no? Be exaggerated or even be paraded. No? Ipaparade lang natin yan. So, let me begin with this question. What is fasting? No? Ano ba yung fasting? Well, fasting is defined as what? I'm sure all of us know it. Abstinence from food. No, alam mo, bet ya, hindi tayo kakain. And speaking of fasting, did you know that in the Bible, mas maraming times diniscuss yung fasting kaysa baptism? No? Fasting is, uh, is uh, mentioned 77 times, whereas baptism, 75 times lamang. But, you would surely know that even in our pulpit, even in Bible study, bihira lang natin pag-usapan ng fasting. Tama ba? Bihira lang. No? Except, no? Except when you are talking to someone who is into a kind of fast that is what? Usong-uso ngayon. No? Ano, yung, ano yung fasting na usong-uso ngayon? Intermittent fasting, no? Intermittent fasting. And I am sure a lot of people does that, no? Don't worry, hindi ko na kayo papataasin ng kamay. Huh? A few months ago, no, I said, I saw two members of, in our church, and I said to them, Wow! Ang payat mo ah! No? And sabi nila, Pastor, kasi nag intermittent fasting kami. No? Now, question. Is intermittent fasting blasphemous? No, masama ba? No? If it's done merely for weight loss purposes? Of course, hindi. Huh? So for those of you who are doing intermittent fasting, don't worry. No? Hindi yan masama. It is not ungodly. It is not sinful to practice intermittent fasting. And for those of you who practice intermittent fasting, you are not dishonoring yung Christian discipline. No? Because why? People who do intermittent fasting are doing it simply for what? For physical benefit. No? Parang exercise din lang yan. Now, I think I forgot to... Ano. Saida, sorry. Nakaon na. Ayan. <coughs> anyway, when is fasting not fasting? No? When is fasting not fasting for Christians? No? When is fasting not fasting for Christians? Actually, it's really hard to tell the difference. Paano malalaman yung isang tao ay IF o yung isang tao ay BF, Biblical Fasting? No? But why? Because both of them abstain from eating and drinking. However, the main difference sa natin malalaman, the end result. Ano yung end result ng IF? Ano yung end result ng Biblical Fasting? What do you get out of it? Of course, for those of you who practice intermittent fasting, what do you get? You lose weight, you lose your cholesterol, high cholesterol level, baba ba yung sugar level mo, no? You get a good physique, no? So that is what you get out of IF. While people who practice biblical fasting experience what? Indirect results. Indirect benefit. Meaning fasting is a means to an end. And what is that end? No? Ano yung end result ng, fast, ng biblical fasting? I'll answer that later. No? Siyempre, parang key novella yan. Suspense. Yeah. But let's be clear this morning. We are not getting into a physical fasting. We're not even getting into a medical fasting or even a political approach. But we will look only into the spiritual approach to fasting. Now, in our passage in Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 to 18, Jesus presented two approaches to fasting. Yung unang una is a 
hypocritical pretentious fasting. Union number one. Number two, it is a genuine corrective fasting. And the end result, makita natin sa verse 18. And so let me begin with the first approach. No? What's the first approach? The hypocritical pretentious fasting. So let me read verse 16. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigured their faces so that their fasting may be seen by others. And truly, I say to you, they have received their rewards. So, for those of you who are not familiar with fasting, maybe some of you hindi kayo nagpa-fasting, notice what Jesus said. Ano sabi niya sa simula pa? When? When? Kailan? It means at any time or every time. Which means Jesus expects all of us, followers of Jesus Christ, to fast. Kailangan magpa-fast tayo. Now, Biblical fasting is more than just the ultimate crash diet. Hindi lang yan gugutumin mo sarili mo. No? But the most important thing to remember is when you practice this particular spiritual discipline, realize that fasting, fasting is to be done for a purpose. And yung purpose niyan is what? A God-centered purpose. Or else, like I said earlier, gugutumin mo lang sarili mo. There's also a wider and liberal view that aside from food, minsan narinig natin yan eh. Pastor, pwede ba hindi na lang food yung fast ko, iba na lang ifa-fast ko? Nowadays, no, uh, some, of, some of them would say, I would abstain from something that I enjoy doing. Which is what? Uh, they would abstain from social media from using their phone, from their sports or hobbies, or even in, in, uh, in Scripture we see abstaining from sexual intimacy. Now, while it is no, applicable to speak of fasting in those activities or those areas, remember, in the Bible, fasting is used in its primary sense. And ano yung primary sense when you talk about fasting? It's all about abstaining from food. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng fasting. Now, hypocrite. No? Alam, ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng hypocrite? No? Well, the word hypocrite no? uh, is uh, used in the Greek theater. No? And it describes an actor wearing a mask. Yun yung primary meaning nun, simula pa. You're a hypocrite. Ibig sabihin, meron ka nilalagay na mask sa mukha. But later, that particular word evolved. No? Like evolved siya. And it came to what? To mean someone who pretends to be who he is not. Yun yung naging ibig sabihin na. Hypocrite ka. And by the time of Jesus Christ, remember this, the spiritual life of God's people eroded. They deteriorated yung spiritual life nila. To the point that Jesus gave a parable. No? The parable of the what? The Pharisee and the publican. Remember no? how the Pharisee boasted about his fasting? Ilang beses siya mag-fast sa isang linggo? Ano sabi niya? I fasted twice a week. No? Dalawang beses sa isang linggo siya mag-fast. And you know what particular day, according to tradition, what particular day nag-fast yung Pharisee na yon? Every Tuesday and Friday. Now, Pastor, back at every Tuesday and Friday. Well, of, according also to tradition, because Tuesday and Friday are major market days. Major market days. Anong ibig sabihin ng major market days? Maraming tao. No? Major market days. Eh. So, ang daming tao yung Tuesday and Thursday. And it means that during those days, yung city of Jerusalem was so full of people. And those who fasted hypocritically and pretentiously were able to show off their fasting. No? Anong gagawin nila? They would whiten their faces to look pale. They would wear shaggy clothes para magmukhang talagang you know, hirap na hirap sila. 
They would even no, not, not take a bath, put on uh, ashes on their hairs, so that they would look what? They would really look that they were, are really so messed up and they want to fast. Sadly, all these hypocrites were doing, no? all they were doing were centered around whom? No? Gusto lang nila magpakita para sikat sila. And where is God in their fasting? Wala. No? God was never in their hearts and mind. And that's why Jesus Christ condemned such kind of fasting. And since their motive no, was to parade around the city looking what? Looking very holy, looking very spiritual, Jesus Christ declared, congratulations, congratulations. No? Uh, you, ha you have won the Best Actor and Actresses Award, and you have received your rewards in full. Remember this, remember this. When our heart is not right with God, our fasting becomes hypocrisy. Remember that. Pag yung puso natin is not right with God, our fasting becomes hypocrisy. And so, how can we rid ourselves of such hypocritical, pretentious fasting? Well, Jesus gives a prescription. And what is that prescription? He gives a corrective, genuine fasting. And let me read again, verses 17 to the first part of verse 18. But when you fast, anoint your head with oil. Wash your face, and that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. This means that if we want to fast correctly, no, you should still what? Take good care of yourself. No? If you, for the guys, no, if you normally shave, nag-aahit ka, mag-aahit ka. No? If you normally brush your teeth, please always brush your teeth kahit na hindi ka nagfa-fasting. No? For the women, if you put makeup, when you are fasting, please put on makeup. No? So that the people cannot tell by your appearance that you are fasting. Yun yung purpose natin. Para hindi mapansin kahit sino that we are fasting. But if it is unavoidable, if it is necessary, like kung sino sa inyo yung kasal na, may asawa na, no? And you have, to, you have to really let your wife know that you're fasting. Otherwise, magtatakas siya. Naku, ang grabe naman ang problema ni Edward. Bakit hindi na siya kumakain? No? Chintwa tayo, chilo. Siguro matatakot. Diba? So you let your wife know. No? I, I'm going to fast today. Ah, or I'm going to fast every supper. Or I'm going to fast for the whole day. Even for those of you who are working, tell your office mates. No? Now, Ay, kasi usually madalas kayo mag, mag, mag lunch together or mag breakfast together. Tell them you're on a fast. Let them know. No? The problem, no, listen, no, the problem is not whether or not alam ng spouse or ng office mate mo. Hindi yun ang problema. The problem is, no, you want them to know, no, yung nagfa fasting ka because you want to look what? spiritual. No? The problem is not whether another person knows or asks that you're fasting, but whether you want the person to know or ask about your fasting so that you will look spiritual. To let your spouse or office mate know is what? You are informing them. Pinapaalam mo. But wanting to be viewed as spiritual, yun yung hypocrisy. And that is what Jesus wants us to avoid. In other words, Jesus is saying, make sure we do not do things to our appearance, to our posture, that would draw attention to ourselves or our fasting. 
Now, the Bible speaks of so many types of fasting. Uh, we see them both in the Old and New Testament. No? Number one, no? remember when Moses was in Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights? No? He fasted. What do you call that? Supernatural fast. No? Kasi bakit? No? It's a supernatural intervention for you to be able to not eat and drink for 40 days and 40 nights. Second, you also have an absolute fast. Ezra, no, he did that when he was mourning. Bakit? Kasi the people of God were unfaithful. No? And he, he, he fasted without eating or drinking. Next, you also have a regular fast. Now, for the Jews, no, they have one regular fast a year. No? And that is on the what? On the Day of Atonement or the Yom Kippur. Next, you also have a national fast. Remember when King Jehoshaphat, no? he was uh, afraid because what, bakit? Lulusubin siya ng mga Moabites, Ammonites, Amorites. No? And so he turned and seek his attention to God, telling everyone in Judah to fast. Now, that is uh, some types of fasting, but I want you to take note of what I'm going to talk about from five to nine, no? from number five to nine. We also have what? Congregational fast. So remember in Acts chapter 13, verse 2, ginawa ng church in Antioch yan. And while they were fasting, God spoke to them. Set apart whom? Paul and Barnabas. And then they fasted, ministered to him, prayed for them, and then they set them, let them go. You also have partial fast. Now, what is partial fast? For those of you na hindi pwedeng mag talagang no food, then you can take veggies, then you can take juices, fruits, just like Daniel no? and his friends. They abstained from meat, but they took vegetable. You also have normal fast. Jesus abstained for 40 days without food, pero may tubig siya. No, may tubig siya. Kasi the Bible never told us that uh, he did not drink water. Sabi lang, Jesus uh, stopped uh, stop taking food for 40 days. Then you also have <coughs> occasional fast. Now, occasional fast, remember when, the, when uh, Esther no, was called by his uncle Mordecai, mag-fast ka. No? So, yan, no? uh, occasional fast. And then last would be the private fast. No? This is the fast that Jesus is describing in Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 to 18. Pero, I'm not here to talk about the different types of fast. No? Uh, the reason we need to know our purpose. No? Knowing the types of fast, okay, for information, but ano ba yung purpose? No? Why are we fasting? Or why do you want to fast? Because, Remember this, if there is no clear purpose for fasting, according to Donald Whitney, any spiritual discipline without direction will be a drudgery or will be hard work. Yun yung mangyayari. Pag wala kang purpose, no, any spiritual discipline, whether fasting, praying, meditating, it will always be hard work. It will be a drudgery. And so, this particular same thing happened to God's people in Isaiah chapter 58. And that is why God was telling them, no? uh, why are you just going through the motion? Do you think I will be pleased by what you are doing? Bakit? Because those people were going through fasting without any purposes at all. And so, we need to remember this. Our fasting... Our fasting can only be right with God if we have the right heart, the right attitude, and the right living. Our fasting can only be right with God if we have the right heart, the right attitude, and the right living. Therefore, why do we fast? Bakit gusto nyong mag-fast? Why? Well, let me tell you 
at least no, one of these biblical principles why people would want to fast. Number one, gusto mong may strengthen yung prayer life mo. Why? Admit it. Ako rin, guilty. There are instances pag tayo nagpre-pray, we have become what? Indifferent. Diba? Lord, pagalingin mo siya. Ngayon lang. Walang passion. No? Hindi ka na passionate. No? Hindi ka na persistent. Hindi ka na dependent. Masabi lang no? na nagpinag-pray ko siya. No? Remember this, no? When you fast, ang basic purpose niyan is what? It has connection with prayer. If you check your Bibles, when they fast, they fasted and prayed. They fasted and prayed. Always, always, it is connected with prayer. And so when you fast, when you practice fasting, remember, it is connected with prayer. No? So, anong ibig sabihin ng pastor? Can I change the mind of God? No? Kasi I remember that in our church. Pastor, magpa-fast ako. Bakit? Kasi may gusto kong gawin eh. Gusto ko sagutin ni God yun. Can we twist the arm of God? Can we change the mind of God? Of course not. No? Of course not. But fasting changes our praying. Babaguhin ni God yung prayer mo. No? And what happens is what? We become more persistent, like I said earlier. We become more passionate and we become more dependent on God. Alamo, for me personally, no, when I fast, fasting helped me in the way I intercede for people. No, it not only improves how I pray for them, but it also improves what I need to pray for them. No, as I continue to pray, the Holy Spirit instill in my mind what are some other things that I need to pray for for a particular person. From being, honestly, from being indifferent, no, I become more passionate. From become self-centered to being what? More God-centered or God-focused. That's number one. Strengthen our prayer. Number two, we want to what? Seek God's guidance. Seek God's guidance. Fasting makes us more receptive and sensitive. Of course, hindi yung pagbukas mo ng Bible, sasabihin sa'yo, o oh, sige, magpakasal na kayo, Big Son and Bea. Hindi ganun yun. No, hindi ganun kadirekta yung sasabihin sa Bible. But, what do you gain? No? When you seek God's direction, you have what? You have God's peace. When you make that decision, you have God's peace. No? Third, we want to express grief. No? Grief. Expressing grief is one of the main reasons, primary reason why people fast. Nalulungkot ka. Nalulungkot ka. No? Uh, expressing, gift, expressing grief. Have you noticed, pag tayo nalulungkot o masama loob natin, may gana ka bang kumain? Wala. Wala. And so, that is one way of expressing grief. Since hindi ka na makakain, you spend that time praying for a particular person or, or whoever he or she may be. Not only that, no? So, biblical purpose of fasting, it strengthens your prayer life, seek God's guidance, express grief, seek deliverance and protection. To seek God's deliverance and protection, especially in dangerous circumstances. No? And that is generally carried out with whom? Tayong lahat. We can pray. No? We can pray together, especially right now. We can pray for what? For peace in Israel. Diba? We can pray for the peace in Ukraine. We can pray together to, for the safety of even yung mga innocent lives. Usually, yun yung mga kawawa. Eh. Yung mga mamamayan doon. Next, we can also, uh, purpose of biblical fasting is expressing repentance and return to God. No? So, fasting can help you what? Lord, talagang sorry. I really committed a grave sin against you. And I want to repent. What is to repent? 
to turn around. Ha? Pag to turn around, ilang degrees? 180 lang ha? Kasi pag 360, babalik ka uli dyan. No? Turn around and turn away from the things na ginagawa mong mali. No? And we follow the path of obedience and godliness. Next, to humble ourselves before God. No? Fasting is truly what? An expression of what? Humility. No? Humility. You, you can fast, no? and as you fast, as you pray, you can kneel. You can just sit. It's up to you. But don't lie down. Ha? Kasi pag nag-lie down ka, baka bukas ng umaga na amen mo. No? But seriously, no? when we fast, I see some would be kneeling. No? Some would be just sitting. Some would even lie prostrate. It's up to you. Seven, no? one of the purpose why we pray, fast and pray is because we are concerned of the work of God. So on a micro scale, on a micro scale, kami mga parents, Ching and I, we fast because we want to pray for our children. No? We want to pray for my dad. Bakit? For my children, of course, we want to pray that they would grow up in the fear and knowledge of God. For my dad, no, I fast and pray bakit? Because I want God to change his heart from a heart of stone to a heart. travel abroad, we would pray, fast and pray for what? Para to set myself apart from temptation, right? Sometimes I would go alone for a trip. So set myself apart from temptation. When you see, no, when you face a decision of uh, ano yung job na kukunin mo? Ma more money with less time with God? Or more money, no? uh, sorry, more money but less time with God or the other way around. So you pray, you pass about that. Lastly, you express love and worship to God. From 1 to 9, what I talked to you about was about, what? about uh, fasting because of disaster, because of hardship, because of trouble. But number 10, we fast because this is our expression of our love and devotion to God. Fasting really can be a test testimony of what? That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So, again, one way of doing that during meal time, during breakfast or lunch, what can we do? You focus on reading His word. You focus on playing gospel song. Use that time to worship, to show your love and devotion to God. Just remember this. Fasting is not an obligation, but a privilege. And any privilege na yan. Let's read that together. To experience the grace of God in a special way.
to experience the grace of God in a special way. And so after Jesus discussing in the hypocritical, pretentious manner, in the corrective, genuine manner of fasting, Jesus gives a promise, a reward to those who will faithfully observe them. And he said, And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Now, I will begin with what Jesus did not say. He did not say a lie when the Father will reward us. He did not say how the Father will reward you. But Jesus says, My Father who sees in secret will reward you. Darating siya. Darating yun. Now, what are those rewards? Usually, yun ang tinatanong natin eh. Diba? What are those rewards? Ano yung rewards na pwede kung makukuha pa sir if I fast? No? Well, one thing I am sure of, our Father never fails to notice fasting from those people who love Him. Fasting that comes from the heart. And as certain as the numerous promises He has in Scripture, God's promise is what? He will surely bless you. He will surely bless us when we fast. And, anong blessing blessing yun? Well, I remember yung sabi sa Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, if I'm not mistaken, that He will bless you far more abundantly beyond what you think or imagine. Akala mo ito lang yung blessing mo, pero it will be far more abundantly. You know, a while ago I said that biblical fasting is connected to something else. And that biblical fasting is a means to an end. So let me share with you, ano yung end result? Ano yung end result ng fasting? Fasting increases your focus on issues that needs prayer. Sometimes, you know, when we pray, we sometimes lose focus. Fasting helps you focus on your prayer items. Number two, fasting gain an understanding, a clear understanding of what are your priorities and what really matters. When you fast, God gives you that sense of understanding of what matters most. Number three, it helps examine yourself and check your motive. Bakit ba ako nagpa-fast? Do I cloak my fasting? Kunyari, I would fast because of biblical reason, pero magpapayat lang ako. Fasting helps examine yourselves and check your motives. Fasting assists you in seeking God's will. It will assist you, honestly. Number five, it increases your self-control and discipline. So, it will, it will help you endure during moments na dutong na dutong na. It increases endurance during times of grief and crisis as well. It will help you persevere in fasting. So, even kanina, if I did not dictate any mga particular uh, blessings or rewards that may come to you, itong end result of fasting, uh, the end result of fasting will surely motivate each and every one of us to consider to think about it and even practice fasting. You know, as I end the marking message, of course I will not tell you uh, everything without practicing it. Diba? How can I tell you about fasting? Why would you make fasting? Right? So, let me share with you my personal experience in fasting. The first time, the first time ko talaga, first time I practiced fasting. Two meal fast yun. Two meal fast. Kasi bakit? Bihira na ako ng breakfast, eh. Di fasting na yun, di ba? And second, I skipped lunch. No, I skipped lunch. And I thought, easy, easy. I thought, 
because he's in DC. If I try to make myself what? Busy at work. I even have to tell my wife from the Bella Line. Sabi ko, hindi, para niyong ginagawa kaya hindi ako kakali. Then, between 2 to 5 p.m., 2 to 5 p.m., ano nangyari sa aking stomach? Ayun na, bro. My stomach was growling and I cannot think of anything but food, of course. I was looking forward to a plan, to a plan. At pag 6 of plan, alam mo naman ang ordering ko. Focus ko. I was I was already imagining what the food that I would be eating should be told. No, should be told. That particular day of fasting was miserable. Miserable. Self-centered. No, it's all about what willpower, self-endurance, and no spiritual benefit whatsoever. That was my first. So, of course, you know, if I want to speak about fasting, I have to practice and wait for the result result from fasting. And so, let me tell you things that I learned from those sad experiences or from those bad experiences of fasting. Number one, no, three things now. First, I learned that my personal fast, no, kailangan you have a God-centered purpose, number one. If you want to do biblical fasting, it should be a God-centered purpose. <laughs> if it's not God-centered, tigil mo lang. Huwag na lang. Sayang lang yung pakiyong First, God-centered purpose. And, and I tell you 10 purposes why we will be fasting. Second, if you need to tell your spouse or office mate, sabihin mo. Let them know that you are fasting. You're informing them. I would tell Jake, hindi ako kain na I'll be fasting. Walang masama mo. Ano yung masama? If I want Jake to know so that I will look more spiritual. Pero kung gusto ko lang ipaalam sa kanya, that's okay. Information. Not trying to look spiritual. And then number three, I want you to remember this. Number three, during moments that your stomach is growling, ano yung isipin mo? Pagpagkain. Okay? Don't think about food. Isipin mo to. The reason why I'm not hungry is because I am fasting. And fasting is connected with prayer. So, the reason why I'm hungry right now is because I'm fasting. And the reason why I'm fasting is I am praying. So, prepare a prayer list. Prepare a prayer list of what are the things that you want to pray for. Para you will be focused on those prayer items. Top of my uh, prayer list, like I said earlier, my father's salvation. My children's future. I am even praying for a friend who has what? Nagkaroon siya ng recurring illness. I'll, I'll, I'll tell that person, oh, I'll be fasting because I will, I will, be, I will spend that time praying for you. So there are many reasons why we want to pray. But prepare a prayer list. So that all throughout your fasting, Every time pagbutong ka na, ilabas mo na yung prayer list, hindi yung pagkakot. Ilabas mo na yung prayer list and start praying for those prayer items. Fasting no, is not just about getting hungry. Remember that. Hindi lang butumin yung sarili mo. It needs to have a God-centered biblical purpose. And it all points to this. Okay. Our fasting all points to this. Let's read this together. Biblical fasting communicates spiritual hunger and longing for God. Biblical fasting 
communicate spiritual hunger and our longing for God. You know, in Matthew chapter 9, kanina Matthew chapter 6 tayo. In Matthew chapter 9, when the disciples of John came to Jesus asking, Bakit yung mga disciples mo? They are not fasting. We're asked, our disciples or John's disciples are fasting. Remember what Jesus answered. What did Jesus say? The attendants of the bridegroom cannot mourn so long as the bridegroom is with them. But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them and they will fast. Who's the bridegroom? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Was the bridegroom taken away? After. No, when Jesus was taken, no, was crucified. Jesus said the time will come when we, his followers, we, followers of Lighthouse, no, will be fasting. And the time is now. Why? Because Jesus Christ, our bridegroom, is in heaven. Because we long for him and anticipate his second coming. For the last time, for the last time, biblical fasting communicates our spiritual hunger and longing for God. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Truly, we believe that your word that has come forth from this pulpit will not return to you empty, but truly will achieve the purpose for which you have sent it. Lord, we, your children, have heard your word. Lord, I pray for everyone of us that not only do we hear your word, but we do whatever it is that you are commanding us to do. I pray all of this only in Jesus' name.
couple of announcements. Uh, first and foremost, continue to pray for our medical mission next week. Uh, there is a total of seven people who will be joining the team next week. So please keep be us in prayer. Pray for the divine appointment as well as we share the gospel of uh, Malawi from Palestine. So, Thank you. 